Ra is power. Ra is energy. Ra is your life force. And for we golden beetle shamans, Ra is magic. But let's explain what Ra is from the point of view of the black Kemao of Egypt. They said to understand anything in the universe, study the hieroglyphs of Egypt. All knowledge and all power are contained within those glyphs. Ra was called many things by many cultures. He was called by the Dogon, the Nyama, by the Yoruba, Ashe, the Zulu called him Umbwenge, the blacks of South India, the Dravidians called him Kundalini and Prana, the Chinese called him Chi, the Japanese called him Ki, the Hawaiians called him Mana, we in Kemet call him Ra. And visually, as you see on your screen here, he is shown as a hawk man with a sun disk encircled by a cobra. What does this visual tell us? What's the code being told you? First of all, he's shown as a hawk. Why is this? Well, first and foremost, in this context, energy within you is obtained if you breathe the way a hawk would. You see, hawks fly the highest of all birds. They can fly in the highest stratosphere of Earth, where there's very little oxygen, the air is very thin. So they can clearly maximize the intake of oxygen. And the golden beetle shaman, who is able to copy this, who is able to do deep breathing, deep diaphragm, yogic breathing while doing certain locks, certain movements with their body and holding their breath are able to extract from the air they inhale prana, life force, chi. And when you do this you get more oxygen. Now oxygen is combustible. It can be set on fire. So by having more oxygen you have more fuel to burn equating to more energy. So by deep breathing and pranayama yoga, the yoga of deep breathing or swara yoga, the yoga of breath, you're able to take your spirit to the heights of flight. Through the holding of breath, you're able to give yourself a fuel boost that allows your astral bodies to fly high into the spirit world, into the duat, to visit the spirit of the constellations to enter the dream worlds. Now, he's also shown as a hawk because hawks have very keen vision. This is most important on two points. One, energy sees you. Energy is aware. There is consciousness in energy. It is aware of you and how you're treating it, how you are flowing with it. You know this as synchronicity, luck, or bad luck. When your energy is not flowing right, it's aware of you and then brings you things, magnetizes things in your life through negative synchronicities, accidents, problems, losses, robberies, that try to recalibrate you. So you begin to alter your energy flow so it's balanced and harmonious. So energy is aware of you and lets you know it's aware of you by magnetizing synchronicities, things on the outside of your life that match your internal state of mind. So if your mind is negative, you draw negative things. If your mind is positive, you draw positive things. So, energy is aware. Now, awareness is recessive compared to its power, but it's there. And it's foolish to say that energy is devoid of consciousness, devoid of awareness. That is an idiotic statement. It actually has awareness. That's why it knows how to perform in certain ways. How electricity knows how to stay electrical and not become hydro hydraulic. There's something telling it. Stay in this form. That's the consciousness. And we showed this eye saying that energy is watching you. You are being watched. Your life force is aware of what you're doing and how you're treating it. So don't think you're going to fool anyone by lying, cheating, stealing, or doing dirty deeds behind the scenes. Perhaps no human saw you, but the chi saw you, the life force saw you, 
It's also called the Holy Spirit. Ra would be the Holy Spirit. In fact, we use that phrase in Egyptian. The Neter Netri. The Neter Netri, which means the Holy Spirit. That's not a term from the Bible. That was far before the Bible, that actual phrase. It was from the blacks of Kemet, of Egypt. Now, the hawk has upon his head a disk of the sun encircled by a cobra. The disk is called the aton, the aton, yeah? And the cobra is called ku, or aku. Now, let's break down the code very quickly. Why a disk? The disk represents matter. And as such, it's telling you how matter operates. Matter moves like a disk, like a wheel or a circle. It goes through phases of externalizing, internalizing, heating and cooling. You know this as the four seasons. So, when energy first goes outward, it's kind of weak, but it's going, it's getting warm. That's called the spring phase. It's springing outward. When it hits the summit of its external fire, maximal heat, at the summit of the temperature. We call that summer or the summit. When the energy begins to recede and cool off and go inward, it starts to fall in temperature. We call that the season of fall, where the temperature is falling. And when it's at the bottom of its cycle, when it's going underground, we say it's in the winter phase, invierno. In Spanish, the word for winter is invierno, inverted. It's inverting, going under. So the disk, the circle, is teaching you through code. All things in your life will move in a circle. Let's say we have two beautiful brothers who meet each other one day at a ritual, an African ritual. And in the beginning, their energy for each other springs up. It just starts to bloom. It's not fully flamed up yet, but it's heating. So that's springing outward. So you start to talk, you exchange numbers, you begin the externalization of your desire for that man. Then it heats up, and the more you get to know each other, you become more passionate and more engaged, you hit, hit a climax called the summit, summer phase of the relationship. Then you kind of settle in together and you become entrained with each other and balanced and it kind of falls away. The energy kind of falls inward and cools off. It's going towards the fall or autumn phase. And the winter is when it's inverting, going underground, which means it's going to either be buried underground and die or it's going to go deeper, depending upon the maturity of the men involved. So the disc is a code telling you everything in your life will go through four basic seasons, four major turning points. Your relationships will go through these stages. Your finances will go through these stages. Your health, your education, your friendships, your enemies, everything follows a disc-like shape. Now, the cobra is called Aku or Ku, which means words of power or formulas. The code of the snake, generically speaking, is formula, as in the formula for equals mc squared, the formula for torsion, the formula for electricity, whatever. The science forms you learned in high school and college. The snake represents energy, and the disk is matter. So the sun is matter, and it's surrounded by formulas that contain and shape matter. So, there are two types of formulas. One, which is the material formulas of physics, chemistry, engineering, that kind of thing. Then there are the words of power formulas that can also shape and contain and structure matter. Now, we used a snake symbol because energy moves like a sine wave, like a snake, up and down. Also, the word cool means enlightened, luminous, bright. 
energy is radiant. Energy has a radiant side to it. Oftentimes, there was a, oftentimes we saw a dot in the middle of the sun disk. That dot corresponds to the gravitational side of energy, the centripetal force of energy moving towards the center, and the snake was the centrifugal force moving outward. So energy has two sides, radiating and gravitational, outward and inward. Now, the word ku means wisdom as well, telling us that energy is aware of you. Again, repeating that theme that energy sees you and is aware of you. Now, the snake also represents the patterns of nature spiraling. You see the snake encircles the disk, and if you were to make the disk into 3D, it becomes a sphere or a toroid. A toroid is a giant donut. And the snake encircling it implies spin, torque, torsion that all energy moves in a torsion or spinning motion. Your atoms are spinning. The planet Earth is spinning. The moon spins around the Earth. The sun is spinning. The galaxy is spinning. Black holes are spinning. Torsion is part of energy. And in order for you to get energy moving, you've got to spin it. You have to loop your microcosmic orbit, what we call the fountain of youth, inside of you, by drinking solar energy because it's a sun disk. Why is it a sun disk? Because a sun is symbolic of the nexus point where energy congeals into matter, into plasma. Plasma is neither solid, liquid, nor gas. It's somewhere in between. And stars or suns are fire, balls in the sky. It begins by what? Nothing. It's just this blank space. And then there's this gravitational field that begins, and it begins swirling particles of matter to form an accretion disk. The particles then are pulled towards the center of this gravitational pull, they heat up, they explode, fusion happens, you get a star. So from nothing you get this explosion of energy. So we saw the sun as the symbol of formulas becoming matter. Now, by you using the formulas of the words of power, you breathe. You see, when you are in ritual, if you go to an African ritual and they start drumming, what you'll notice is people start spinning, they start twirling very quickly. They start going into torsion and torque. When you invoke spiritual energy, the real deal, the African way, you start spinning and you're creating torsion, you're making an accretion disk, you're creating your star and you're creating your planets, basically speaking. So, by doing deep breathing, breath of fire, pranayama yoga, kundalini yoga, you heat up the oxygen which combusts, gives you energy to leave the earth to fly shamanically, and you start spinning, you fall into a trance and you have visions. All of this is encoded in the symbol of Ra. So in order for you to know how to awaken your magic, study the image. Drink in solar energy. Never stare at the sun, but you can will your mind to, what we say, pull in the serpents of the sun, the energy forms, the energy beams of the sun into your subtle body, your acupressure points, your microcosmic orbit. You can awaken your Kundalini, which we call ku. Ku and kundalini have the same basic stem, the same sound ku. We call it uben ra, the rising of ra, or the rising of kundalini. The rising of energy, life force, and ashe in you. So the image of ra on your screen shows you both the theme of the subject, which is ra, energy, ashe, power, magic, and also the method for getting it. By studying snakes, when the snake bites you, your pneumogastric nerve becomes paralyzed, actually. It attacks that nerve at your solar plexus, solar plexus, the house of the sun, energy again. When that becomes locked, you then trigger the parasympathetic nervous system, which then triggers the frontal brain lobe, which is the site of reason and visions. So the serpent's bite acts a lot like electricity. It feels like you're being shocked through ele electricity, again, a form of fire. And by doing yoga, deep breathing, you will notice, or rituals with drums, your breath locks. And all of a sudden, you fall into trance, and you start seeing things, you're able to do things, and you're able to wield power and bend the elements. So, long live Ra. May all gay men reawaken Ra in our community to bring us light, fabulosity, sparkle, and glitter. May Ra flame through all gay men and set the world on fire. Dwa Wend, 
Hotepu.